Why does the Lord delay His coming? 2 Peter 3, 3-4 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. There are those who will rise in the last days, and the Bible describes them as scoffers. In other areas of the Bible, they are described as false teachers. They are scoffers, mocking the return of Christ, and they follow their own evil desires. They deny the Lord Jesus and His second coming. The Bible establishes that God is not a man that He should lie, neither is He the Son of Man that He should repent. Whatever God says He will do is not beyond His capacity to do. In the early verses of John 14, Jesus said that He was going to heaven to prepare a place for us and that He would return to take us so that we can be where He is. That was over 2,000 years ago. The early apostles waited eagerly for His return, but He didn't come in their lifetime. We have heard so many messages about the coming of the Lord, and a lot of people, including well-meaning believers and even false prophets, have questioned about His return. Many people have lost their faith in the prophecy of Christ's return. Today, we are going to see why the Lord appears to be delaying His coming. God is not raising our hopes for naught. He is a covenant-keeping God. Basically, there are two reasons the Lord appears to be delaying His coming. First, because God is merciful. And second, because certain future prophecies need to be fulfilled. God is a merciful God. 2 Peter 3, 9 reads, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The delay in the coming of the Lord is not a result of failure or weakness to bring what He has determined to be into reality. God cannot fail. What most people refer to as delay in the coming of the Lord is actually an act of mercy which God is extending to sinners. God does not want anyone to perish. He is delaying the return of the Lord Jesus Christ so that sinners will have the opportunity to repent. It is not the will of God for anyone to go to hell. Therefore, He is patiently waiting for all to come to repentance. We in our finite mind and finite understanding perceive the weight of the second coming of the Lord as a delay. But, in actuality, it is not a delay whatsoever. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will happen on the appointed time, according to God's timing. Any perceived delay from our perspective is due to the long-suffering of God. Think about it. If the Lord returned 10 years ago, or maybe even 20 years ago, do you think that you would have been raptured? You see, there is no delay in the coming of the Lord Jesus. Everything is happening according to the prophetic calendar of the Lord. Everything is on schedule to meet the prophetic calendar of God. It is our impatience that we have to deal with. God is long-suffering, wanting more and more people to enter the kingdom of God, wanting more and more people to gain eternal life. God wants you in heaven more than you want to be there. He created for His pleasure and His glory. He knows that the moment the last trumpet sounds, there will be no mercy anymore. Therefore, His mercy for sinners is withholding Him from bringing judgment upon the earth. Were it not that salvation is by choice, God would have harvested every single person on earth into His kingdom. But He is patiently waiting for sinners to make their choice to come to Him through Jesus Christ. God has done all within His ability to save humanity from sin. There is nothing left that God has not done to work out the salvation of mankind. 
It is not a light thing that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible didn't say that God loves believers alone. No, it says that God loves the world so much that he offered his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for their sins. By the sacrifice of Christ, God paid for the sins of the entire world. Isn't it amazing that God tied our only salvation to simply believing in His Son, Jesus Christ? That is how deeply God desires everyone on earth to be saved. Everyone who goes to heaven is not entering heaven because they are a good person, or because they followed the Ten Commandments, or because they don't lie or steal or cheat. No. Everyone in heaven is there because of one man, and that one man is Jesus Christ. That is the love of God. God knew that you would not enter heaven by your own righteousness. The standard of the righteousness required for heaven is too high for you to attain. Therefore, He sent His only Son who lived a perfect life and died for your sins and your transgressions, that you may have eternal life. If you are here on earth and you have not given your life to Christ, you are part of the people God is waiting for. God is not too weak to bring His promise to pass. He is only being patient for sinners to come to the knowledge of Christ and be saved. This, therefore, means that all believers have a great work to do in ensuring that the gospel of Christ is preached to all before the final day of the Lord comes. The second reason why it appears as if the Lord is delaying His coming is the need for certain future events to be fulfilled first. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There are certain prophecies that must precede the return of the Lord. And until those prophecies are fulfilled, the coming of the Lord will be withheld. Some of those prophecies which are to prepare the return of the Lord are just being fulfilled in this generation, while some of them keep unfolding with time. However, they must all be fulfilled before the Lord would return. Two of these prophecies is the falling away and the revealing of the son of perdition. Currently, we know that there is a great falling away which has twofold dimensions. The falling away of the world and the falling away of the church from the faith. The love of many believers have grown cold and some have been taken over by apostasy. Some believers are already being deceived and some have yielded to seducing spirits. These are the perilous times Paul wrote to Timothy about in 1 Timothy 4, 1, when he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There is a great falling away that is happening in our generation. But I encourage you, my fellow believers in Christ, stick with God. Stick with Jesus. Depend on God. Don't allow the desires of this world to drown out your love for God. I encourage you to store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Do not be part of those spoken of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Build your life around Christ. Build your family around Christ. There is need for these scriptures and prophetic events to be fulfilled before Jesus would come. The high level of immorality and lawlessness in the world today is another end-time prophecy that is being fulfilled. At the fullness of time, God will bring all things He has said to pass. God is not delaying anything, but in His perfect timing, everything He said shall come to pass. Prophetic events are being systematically fulfilled, 
and they are signs that Jesus is coming again. If the prophecy of Jesus' birth was prophesied several centuries before he was born, then there is no doubt that the prophecy about his return is true. We must keep ourselves prepared for the coming of the Lord. Don't be worried about the day of Christ's return. Just ensure you are prepared daily, either through rapture or through death. Prepare to meet the Lord Jesus Christ.